Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anubama Chaudhary Devgan, your Physiology Faculty. And this is the daily quiz series in the run-up to NEET PG 2025. This is week five and we are discussing endocrinology and some topics of environmental physiology. So let's have a look at the first question. It says a 65-year-old man with a history of essential hypertension is being treated with an ACE inhibitor. All of the following changes will be expected in this patient. So the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism, renin acts on angiotensinogen, converting into angiotensin 1, and which in turn is converted by the enzyme which is called the angiotensin converting enzyme, which is present in the lungs, to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2, we know, is a very powerful vasoconstrictor. It will cause an increase in the total peripheral resistance. And this, in turn, will increase aldosterone secretion from the adrenal cortex. And adrenal uh, aldosterone will increase the sodium reabsorption and potassium secretion. So let's have a look at the options. It says, is there going to be an increase in plasma renin? Now here we are giving an ACE inhibitor. So there is decreased formation of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. So we expect that there would be some increase in the plasma renin activity. Is there going to be an increase in the total peripheral resistance? No. In fact, there is going to be a decrease in the total peripheral resistance. Angiotensin 2, which is a very powerful vasoconstrictor, is now reduced. Is there an increase in sodium excretion? Which is true because there is less aldosterone. And aldosterone normally causes sodium reabsorption. So if there is less aldosterone, more sodium will be lost in the urine. Will there be a decrease in blood pressure? Definitely. The ACE inhibitors are very important antihypertensives. So there is going to be a decrease in blood pressure. So my answer here becomes a 22-year-old woman presents with recurrent vaginal candidiasis. Screening shows elevated blood glucose. The patient has started on 25 units of insulin per day. Which aspect of glucose transport will be enhanced by insulin? So basically, we are looking at the target organs for insulin, which are the adipocytes and the muscle cells. So insulin will increase the GLUT4, which is an insulin-dependent GLUT in adipocytes and muscle cells. So we expect the transport of glucose into adipocytes too transport of glucose into the adipocytes to increase. The transport of glucose into the tubular epithelial cells, brain cells, intestinal epithelial cells, these are all insulin independent. So these will not be affected by the insulin. Which of the following will show a decrease in tourists visiting Leh Ladakh? So when you go into a high altitude area, there is a hypoxic hypoxia. In high altitude, because of a decrease in the atmospheric pressure, there is a decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen, which produces a hypoxic hypoxia. The characteristic features of hypoxic hypoxia are decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen, which is nothing but the dissolved oxygen. And there is also a decrease in the SO2, the saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen. Now, when there is a hypoxic hypoxia, it will stimulate the peripheral chemoreceptors. A decrease in PO2 is a very powerful stimulus for the peripheral chemoreceptors. Which are the peripheral chemoreceptors? Carotid and aortic bodies. And once these are stimulated, there is an increase in the rate and increase in the depth of ventilation, which is known as hyperventilation. And this in turn causes a CO2 washout, which in turn will result in a respiratory alkalosis. So what is alkalosis? The pH now begins to rise. So there will be an increase in pH and a decrease in pCO2. Now, if the pH rises, alkalosis in fact starts having an inhibitory effect on the peripheral chemoreceptors. Acidosis 
excites the peripheral chemoreceptors, alkalosis inhibits the peripheral chemoreceptors. This is a situation where you are in high altitude, there is less oxygen in the atmosphere. To compensate for that, we hyperventilate. But now our respiratory drive is getting suppressed by the respiratory alkalosis. So the body will correct this alkalosis and that is the process of acclimatization. So let's look at the options here. Which of the following will show a decrease? So increase in pH, I've just explained it to you, there is alkalosis, there is a decrease in the PaCO2 because of a hyperventilation. What about the pulmonary vascular resistance? Now hypoxia causes a vasodilation of all capillaries and precapillary sphincters except pulmonary. It causes a pulmonary vasoconstriction. And if there is a pulmonary vasoconstriction, that means what will happen to the pulmonary vascular resistance increases. So pulmonary vascular resistance will increase. In fact, sometimes in people staying in high altitude for long periods of time, they may even have pulmonary hypertension. What about 2,3 BPG? Hypoxia is a very potent stimulus for 2,3 BPG generation because in hypoxic conditions, there is going to be increased glycolysis and 2,3 BPG is a byproduct of the glycolytic pathway. So my answer here becomes a decrease in PaCO2. Which of the following is the best treatment for decompression sickness in deep sea divers? Earlier in the week, we have discussed deep sea physiology and I have discussed decompression sickness. So just a brief recap. As we keep going underwater, there is an increase in the surrounding pressure. For every 10 meters or 33 feet below sea level, the pressure increases by one atmosphere. The pressure at sea level is one atmosphere. For every 33 feet or 10 meters that you keep going below the sea level, pressure increases by one atmosphere. So what happens when the surrounding pressure increases? There is an increase in the density of the gases that he is breathing. There is also an increased solubility of the gases. The gases tend to dissolve in the plasma. So more solubility of gases under high pressure. The moment he comes to the surface, and especially if it is a rapid ascent to the surface, there is a sudden release of this pressure. And these dissolved gases now form air emboli. And that is what is known as the decompression sickness. These air emboli will block blood vessels in the joints, in muscles, giving rise to uh, pain in joints and muscles known as bends. And about 10% of our patients can present even with pulmonary symptoms and cerebral symptoms. So this is decompression sickness. And I gave you an analogy there. Uh, I said it is like when you when you see a bottle of Coke or Pepsi, carbon dioxide is in the dissolved state as long as the there is a cap on the bottle. The moment you open the cap and release the pressure, the dissolved carbon dioxide starts forming the bubbles. That's exactly what's happening here. Now to treat this condition, we put the diver in a hyperbaric chamber. What is a hyperbaric chamber? We can increase the surrounding pressure. We place the, the diver in a chamber and you can increase the pressure. So we will rapidly recompress him. Why? Because we want the gases to go back into a dissolved state. And then we will slowly release the pressure so that there is a less chance of air emboli. So rapid recompression followed by slow decompression. Selective destruction of the zona glomerulosa of the adrenal cortex. This is a fairly simple question. Zona glomerulosa of the adrenal cortex produces aldosterone. Zona glomerulosa is the only one which has aldosterone synthase. So it produces aldosterone and we've discussed 
uh, the role of aldosterone increases sodium reabsorption potassium and h plus secretion the other zones in the adrenal cortex are zona fasciculata and zona reticularis zona fasciculata are is responsible for the synthesis of glu glucocorticoids mainly but also some androgens whereas the zona reticularis is mainly androgens and also some glucocorticoids. So zona glomerulosa for aldosterone, zona fasciculata for glucocorticoids and zona reticularis for androgens. What about the medulla? The medulla uh, secretes epinephrine, mainly epinephrine. 90% of the secretion of adrenal medulla is epinephrine. Adrenal medulla is under the control of the sympathetic nervous system. Zona glomerulosa is under the control of the renin angiotensin aldosterone. Fasciculata and reticularis under the control of ACTH from the anterior pituitary. 